All right, so we're going to review um, lessons 1.1 to 1.2. And so this is set up, so I'm just going to do some, you're going to do some until we get to the end, and then you're just going to practice some on your own. So the first one is on domain, range, x-intercepts, uh, and y-intercept. So for the domain, domain we're talking about the x values where the graph is graphed. And so remember on domain, we're moving from left to right. So if we look, if we look at the left side of this graph, so make sure you're looking at one through four, at the left side, that left arrow is pointing towards the left. So that's pointing towards negative infinity. All right. And then the right arrow is pointing towards the right. So the right arrow is pointing towards positive infinity. So that means our domain is going to go all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Then we'll talk about the range. And some of you were asking some questions earlier about this in the previous um, day. Um, so for range, we're going from bottom to top. And so if we look at the bottom of the graph, we have two arrows pointing down, which means those two arrows are both pointing down, which is towards negative infinity. All right, and then when we go to the top of the graph, the top of the graph is where y is 3. So the range is going to be from negative infinity to 3. All right, then the next thing we're going to talk about are the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are where this graph is going to touch or cross the x-axis. And so I'm just going to put little marks there. And then whatever number is there, that is an x-intercept. Um, sometimes you'll have to count. Uh, in this case, the numbers are already there for us. So we have two x-intercepts, one when x is negative 2 and one when x is 4. Okay. And then for the y-intercept, the y-intercept is like the x-intercept, but it's where the graph crosses the y-axis. And there should only be one of those, and there is only one, and it is when y is 2. All right, so I want you all to move over to the other column and complete five through eight on your own. And if I start too soon, um, if the substitute will pause the video, that would be great.
Check your answers with my answers. Make sure every time you do an interval like, like we did on five and six, make sure that you, the smaller number is always on the left and the larger number is on the right. All right, so we're gonna talk about intervals of increasing and decreasing. So I'm gonna try something different this time because we've kind of been struggling with this. So what I want you guys to do is just mark out the y-axis completely so you can't even see it, the numbers. <laughs> so hopefully that will make you not want to use y's on intervals of increasing and decreasing. All right, and then where the graph changes direction, so like the turning point, it, it, you can tell that the graph turns right here. I want you to just draw a line down to the x-axis. Now, when we are given these intervals of increasing and decreasing, we're telling the x values where the graph is increasing and the x values where the graph is decreasing, All right? Now, think about a hill and think about how you read. You read from left to right. So if we're moving left to right on this graph, it is increasing right here. So going uphill, decreasing here, going downhill. Okay. So if we're looking at the axis where we're increasing, it's changing over when x is 1 all of these x's from here to forever to the left. So if we're describing that interval of x's, it is from negative infinity to one. Okay, then for decreasing, we're talking about all the x's from here to forever to the right. So we're talking about one to infinity. Okay. So I'm gonna get you all started on this 11 and 12, and then I'll let you finish it on your own. So we're gonna talk about marking out all the whys. We don't want the whys. We don't care about the whys. All right, then we are going to make a line at the turning point to the x-axis. Right. And that goes to negative 3. So negative 3 is an important x value when we're figuring out these intervals. So you all try this one on your own. So we're increasing on the x's from negative 3 
to forever to the right, which is from negative three to infinity. And we're decreasing um, from negative infinity to negative three. And then positive and negative is different, but we still really don't want the y's. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark out my y's again. All right. So when we're talking about where the graph is positive, the graph is positive above the x-axis. And the graph is going to be negative below the x-axis. Okay, so we have above and we have below. And we're still only talking about x's. All right, so this, this whole section of the graph right here is above the x-axis. So that's going to be the x's between negative 2 and 4. All right? And then this part is below. This part right here is also below. So we're talking the x's that are to the left of negative 2 and the x's that are to the right of 4. Okay. So the x's to the left of negative 2 are from negative infinity to negative 2 and to the right of 4 are 4 to infinity. So I want you all to come over with this other graph and do the positive and negative intervals on your own. Okay, so I did go ahead and I marked on the x-axis the point at negative 7, and then I messed up on that one. And then the point where x is positive 1, because those are the points where it's crossing over the x-axis. Those are the x-intercepts. They're important for positive and negative intervals. Okay, so I, I know my graph is above the x-axis here and here. And so those are the x's that are to the left of negative 7 and to the right of 1, right? So we have to do two different intervals. The left of negative 7 is negative infinity to negative 7. The right of 1 oops, is 1 to infinity. Okay, 
and then below the x-axis where the graph is negative is going to be all the x's between those. So negative 7 to 1. All right, the other thing we're going to review is the transformations. So off the top of your head, try to fill those in with a pencil. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to fill that in, and then we'll just make sure everybody's on the same page. Check your um, adding and subtracting transformations. So don't forget that the inside lies. So it's going to be the opposite of what you're going to expect it to be. So adding inside does shift it to the left and subtracting inside does shift it to the right because the inside lies. It shifts it in opposite of what you would think. Okay. Again, the inside lies. So um, the two multiplying inside, the larger number compresses or shrinks. The smaller number stretches. Okay, and then the last two are reflections. So on the outside, it reflects on the x-axis and the inside reflects on the y-axis. And you can think of it like the yin side. The 
why is the inside. Okay, another thing that I can't remember exactly if I, I talked about this, um, but when things happen on the inside, it changes it horizontally. So inside refers to a horizontal change and the outside will be a vertical change. So up and down or a vertical stretch or a compression inside is going to be left or right or horizontal change, horizontal compression or stretch. Okay, so double check yourself one more time. Can pause the video if someone needs more time. You want to have these right so we get it right on the rest of them. And you all are going to need to start studying this. We will have a quiz in the near future where you won't be able to use this table. So you're going to need to study on your own time. So you'll, you'll know the rules when you go to take a quiz or a test. All right, so for number one, uh, that one is subtracted outside. So anytime you're subtracting outside, it's going to shift down and it's going to shift whatever that number is, which is one. So this is going to, just, all we have to write is down one. Okay, number two. That three is subtracted on the inside. All right, and then according to this one right here, when we subtract on the inside, it shifts it to the right. And so what's subtracted is the three, so we would just say right three. So that original graph is just shifting to the right. Go over to number three. All right, so we're still talking about shifting just the absolute value of x graph. Number three has two transformations. So one of them is that negative, and that negative is outside of the absolute value. So that's going to be this one right here. and the negative outside reflects it on the x-axis. Okay. The other thing that's happening on this one is adding six inside. So that's this one. So we're gonna shift left, whatever that number is, which in this case is um, six. Next one also has two transformations. We have a negative on the inside or a negative on the yin side, which means that we're going to reflect on the y. We also have a plus three on the outside. Adding on the outside is up three, according to the table. Number five also has two transformations. So we're just looking at anything on the on the sheet or on the problem that is changed from just the absolute value of x. All right. So one thing that's changed is this four is multiplied by it, and that's multiplying on the outside. So these two are multiplying on the outside. Because 4 is greater than 1, it's going to be a vertical stretch. All right. 
we also have the minus 2. All right, so that's a subtraction on the outside. So that's going to be down 2. And then for number six, we have that one half multiplied outside. So we go over to multiplied outside, which are these two. One half is less than one, so it's going to be a vertical compression. Okay, the other thing that's happening on this one is five is added inside. And according to the table, adding inside is a shift to the left. So we would go left five. For number seven, we have this four outside. We just did one with a four on the outside. Um, it's still a vertical stretch, multiplying on the outside by a number greater than one. All right. We're also subtracting on the inside, which is going to shift right. And then finally, we're adding on the outside, which is going to be up eight. Okay, you guys try eight on your own. Right, this one has three different things going on. Negative outside is going to be reflection on the x-axis. Multiplying by 5 inside, so the inside lies, 5 is greater than 1. So that's going to be a horizontal compression. Okay. And then finally, we're subtracting on the outside. So that's going to be down. So I want you all to try 9 through 13. I'm going to give you quite a bit of time to work on that. Then I'm going to go back and fill in what the answers are and see if you have um, something we can straighten out before you finish the worksheet.
number 9 because of the 2 multiplied on the outside is going to have a vertical stretch. Sorry, my, my marker or my pen started acting weird. Vertical stretch. Because of the one inside, we're going to go left one. All right. Number 10, because of the minus 3 inside, we are going to shift right 3. Plus 5 outside is up 5. Okay, this negative is outside because there are no parentheses or brackets or anything. So everything on this problem is happening on the outside. So that's going to be reflection on the x-axis. And then minus 6 is going to be down 6. This one's going to have 3. So multiplying by that 0.25 outside is going to be vertical because it's outside. And then because the number is less than 0, it's going to be a vertical compression. Minus 7 is going to be right 7. And then minus 9 is going to be down nine. Okay, for 13 we have two. So multiplying by two on the outside is a vertical stretch. And then plus one is going to be up one. All right, so what I want you all to do for the rest of the time is to finish this uh, worksheet. So finish the next page.